Hanging out at the beach without needing to book a flight or a hotel sounds pretty good, right? Especially if you could actually feel the water and sand. A futuristic dream? Well, not necessarily. How good is VR these days? That's our topic on Shift today. Most of you know that with VR headsets you can virtually float through space or kill monsters. But virtual reality is about to take immersion to the next level. Developers are in a race to make it even more realistic by incorporating more of our senses like touch. The new buzzword is haptic VR. Picking something up with your hands, running your fingers over moss, or reaching out and shaking hands with someone else in the metaverse. Virtual reality developers are working on making our VR experiences more immersive and thus more realistic. But this is no small feat. So, so there are a, a number of outstanding challenges. Uh, first and foremost is, is haptics. That is a, is a fundamental sort of issue because the way that we uh, interact with the real world is, is driven by sort of a, uh, sort of a sensory motor uh, system. So we, we are actively uh, gathering sort of uh, information from the world around us through interactions. And that, that is the key thing uh, for VR to work on. The University of Chicago is even looking into so-called chemical haptics. This wearable contains an integrated mini pump which transmits chemical substances onto the skin that match a given VR experience. The researchers have identified five substances that cause specific sensations, all of which are said to be harmless in small doses. For full body haptic feedback, companies such as Tesla, Meta and Amazon are developing suits so that users can feel touch, force and thermal feedback on their entire body. This would make VR training more realistic and thus better at engaging our muscle memory but it will still take a while before such suits become readily available. I imagine there probably will be a, world, a, a day where we, we do have that sort of reality uh, of full body suits and sort of head mounted displays. Um, but in, in, in the sort of uh, foreseeable future, uh, gloves and sort of robotic devices are probably uh, the, the sort of short term uh, solution to delivering uh, yeah, uh, haptics and VR. One full body suit is the Tesla suit, which provides tactile feedback through electrostimulation. It can even recreate the feeling of rain on skin or temperatures ranging from 20 to 40 degrees Celsius. That's pretty incredible, but the suit also costs several thousand euros. A cheaper option are haptic gloves, like the ones being developed by Meta. These simulate the feeling of pressure on your skin, which isn't just useful for playing games. But even without haptics, Current VR is already impressive, so long as you have the right equipment. Games are still the largest market for VR, and right now 4D games in which a player can move freely in the room are especially popular. Warmth, wind, smell and object interactions make the VR illusion especially convincing. But VR can be used for much more, such as a museum visit that includes stepping right into a painting or a virtual vacation in spite of pandemic travel restrictions. You can climb the famous Swiss mountain, the Matterhorn, or bungee jump off of New York's Statue of Liberty. Now, there are certain sort of experiences that you can get to in a virtual world that are, uh, that would either be impossible, pandemic or otherwise. Uh, and and those, that's where I think the sort of from an entertainment sort of perspective, VR is a real sort of game changer in getting immersed into a a world that you otherwise would not have access to. VR and AR technology are becoming more interesting for other fields. In areas such as medicine, the tech is playing an ever larger part in education and training. VR is especially useful for practicing rare procedures or emergency responses, such as a fire in a tunnel. The Russian Academy of Sciences even simulated an entire moon mission using VR. The real value of VR as a training method is you, you get to experience situations that might uh, happen very rarely or may never happen in your lifetime. Uh, so for example, simulating rare sort of uh, surgical cases 
that perhaps a, a surgeon might only ever operate on, on once. If you're able to simulate that, if you're able to repeat that uh, infinitely, is, a, is, is going to be a game changer for, for healthcare. Practicing operations in VR is clearly useful, but how well do surgeons learn in VR? What actually happens in our brain when we're in a virtual world? And what other effects does VR have on the body? Our brains process real-world and virtual world information through our senses. For example, our hippocampus is involved in spatial navigation. It creates cognitive maps that help us understand our surroundings. Thus far, VR has been a primarily visual experience. Sight is the most important sense. Much of our brain is dedicated to processing visual information, which is why it's normally enough to create primarily visual environments. But everyone knows a real experience involves more. Our brain receives input from all of our senses and combines it. How our brain reacts to VR strongly depends on how many of our senses are stimulated. Studies on rats showed that when they were placed in simple VR surroundings, only 40% of their neural pathways were active compared to real life. The more realistic the VR experience, the more similar the brain activity became. In an experiment where rats were put on VR treadmills, their brain activity closely resembled brain patterns they have when they run on treadmills in real life. This shows that the more immersive the experience, the better our brain responds. If what we hear, taste, touch and smell doesn't match what we're seeing in VR, then the experience feels less real and will also learn less well. Nonetheless, the brain does try to process VR similarly to how it would real experiences. The brain patterns are actually quite similar, so a feeling of anxiety is processed pretty much the same in a virtual and the real world. From fear to gratification, the physiological responses resemble each other. Our heart rate increases, skin conductance changes, our bodies release hormones, and our reward center is activated. Virtual reality can be fun or anxiety-inducing. There are other ways to make VR more immersive. Cambria, Meta's new mixed reality headset, includes built-in front cameras. These film the real world and mix it with the virtual one, which can be useful for things like if you want to quickly write something down without removing the headset. Eye tracking is also being used more and more. For this, special sensors inside the headset track where the user is looking. This has a number of advantages. Eye contact is now possible between avatars in the metaverse. Thanks to the latest VR headsets, which track users' eye movements. The headsets use harmless infrared light to ascertain where a user is looking. The addition means that avatars can make eye contact. Plus, operating menus or aiming at objects can now be done with eye movements alone in VR. The eye tracking tech should also help speed up VR game graphics. And what we know is that it's sort of from the human eye that there's sort of a, uh, the edge of our sort of vision is very low resolution. So you can approximate that and save computing power so you don't have to render the full virtual world. You can just render where uh, sort of the user is looking. This is called foveated rendering. Right now, AI can't reliably predict where a user will look next. So currently, little computing time is being saved. However, it looks like that could soon change. So eye tracking is useful, but it also has downsides. Our eyes produce highly sensitive data, which can be saved, analyzed and sold. Researchers say our gender, age, weight and even personality traits can be gleaned from eye data. What's more, they warn the data can be used to predict our emotional state, drug consumption habits, skills and sexual preferences. Plus, there's another problem. This tech is affected by ethnicity and it's been found to be less good at tracking Asian people's eyes. Uh, we know definitely that much of the research happens in Western, educated, industrialized, rich uh, sort of countries. Um, and that presents a sort of bias uh, for when you're trying to develop a, a technology that is meant to cater for 
uh, humanity at large. One body part that VR developers long overlooked are legs. There was no affordable leg tracking device for a long time, but that recently changed, thanks also to Kickstarter campaigns. Even once expensive VR treadmills are now somewhat affordable. These VR shoes are called Ecto-1. They're still just a prototype, but they are the only shoes you can walk through the metaverse with, while almost moonwalking in real life. The shoe's servo motors go in the opposite direction to the user to keep them from crashing into a real wall. These so-called cyber shoes take a different approach. They were developed with the help of a crowdfunding campaign. For just a few hundred euros more, you can get the swivel chair to go with the shoes. A comfortable, albeit unexpected way to walk in the metaverse. Serious VR gamers may also be interested in treadmills. They provide a different level of immersion, but they're also much more expensive, with a price tag of around 1,200 euros. Vest and shoe sensors track users' movements, and you're secured to avoid being injured in real life while you're in VR. For those who can't afford or don't have space for a treadmill, there's the Slime VR Full Body Tracker, this much cheaper option is probably the best value for money, but users should know it doesn't stop you. So you may want to be wary of walls. But be careful because VR home accidents are now a thing. In the UK, the insurance company Aviva said the average VR-related claim for accidental damage was around 800 euros. Think smashed TV sets. And there have also been serious injuries. Clearly, VR safety isn't really safe yet. But what do you think? Do you have a favorite VR device or one you'd like to see developed? Do you think other dangers are bigger? Or do you not care about VR and prefer to focus on real life? Let us know on YouTube or by email. Bye and see you soon.